Hello! And we'll the feedback to the clean sheet. How are we? You seem very happy for someone who's just lost an old firm. Yeah, but my dramatic en- entrance made up for it. Did it? And I've had time to be sad about it and get over it. Oh, yeah. no form, give me a hell yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Nah, I was pretty poor, but we'll get on to that. How are oh, we? Well, not too bad. Good, and that's the bottom line. Good. So, let's get straight into it then. Yes, it was indeed an old firm loss. Um, many for Rangers, talking, shall we say. Many not talking points. Well, actually, it was an old firm loss for me because I had to watch it and it was absolute shit. Yeah, it was well, really it was. bad. There was no quality at all. Anyone who watches, like people say, oh, people only turn in for the old firm and then they don't watch Scottish football after that. I wonder why the game was shite. It was particularly bad. Um, obviously, I was very raging at the time with what happened. I still don't think it was a foul. The first goal was very much offside. You, you'd have to be blind not to see that. Um, yes. I was just confused at the time because, one, I got excited because the ball's in the back of the net, and two, obviously the, the linesman doesn't put the flag down now until, or up rather, oh, I mean, until... I, he, yeah, he, he could have... He could have put it up straight away. He was that far offside. Yeah, and obviously, I think I don't think I think it was not a foul from Dessers. I think his leg has been booted, so I think that was right. I'll try it again. Unfairly cut off, but we didn't deserve any other goals. They could have played an extra thirty minutes at the time at the end of the moment scored. Yes, I think um, Kyle. I don't know if you want to offer your opinion on the VAR controversy before I. I was just going to say simply, Lager Bielka just, just booted him for no good reason and got away with it. Lager Bielka tries to play the ball, to be fair. Like, Lager Bielka goes to play a pass back to the goalkeeper and um, Desser sticks his foot in. And I see why some people might think it's a foul. I don't think it's a foul. I think it's fine. I think it's Something a goal. Fans. But there, there are several referees. For example, Bobby Madden's came out and said, I think it's a foul. There's clearly one referee in a VAR booth thinks it's a foul. Um it's a respect, like, I can see why people might think it's a foul. People have pointed to a penalty Rangers got against uh, Dortmund, I believe it was, for something very similar. Or didn't get for something very similar. One or, one or the other. Rangers have benefited from a very similar decision in the past. However, with VAR, the amount of debate that has happened on this issue means that it is definitely not a clear and obvious error by the referee. It doesn't reach the bar of clear and obvious error. And that's shown by the fact that there is a clear disagreement. Not if you ignore the bias, people, there's a kind of clear disagreement. Yeah. And that means it should be referee's decision on the pitch. VAR shouldn't be interfering there because it's not clear and obvious. Yeah. I think it should have been a. The referee gave it. The referee gave it. VAR, didn't they? The referee gave it, though. And then when they came over to give the decision to everyone, obviously. His hand signal definitely looked like he was giving it as a goal. As soon as he does that, you know he's changed his original decision. I've no I know, idea but it looked like he... any was confused. No, he gave it looked like he... his hands up here. His I hands he... are like it... up. A goal is down here. A, a you better watch, I'll get edited. <laughs> <laughs> a goal is down here. A goal is kind of pointing at the centre circle. A free kick's up in the air. Not yet. Eh, nah, fair. Eh, but it, it is what it is. And I think it's just where it was in the pitch. It looked somewhere. It, it did at yes. the time, but... He didn't deserve um, another goal, so... Rangers didn't deserve it. it you know, we're going to get on to transfers. As I've said numerous times, it reaffirms everything I've said about Rangers this summer. One, um, one, one observation I did make was Dessers. I've never, seen a, I've never seen a player play so good but yet so bad in one game. I don't I know just think he's it. bad. Like, he's, he does things you expect him moments. to do. He had, he had moments, flashes. but he just has no quality. It was good until he got to pulling his leg back to shoot then it just all went to pop yeah. um, um, the rest I think was... we'll probably talk about this more in, the, in a yeah. future episode probably very soon but uh, Beal was in hot water a lot of fans not wanting him out already and it kind of back after very we... quickly to the VAR thing first which yeah, is yeah. I think if someone the other point I want to make is if the referee gives that as a foul straight away I don't like anyone moans I think the Rangers fans at the time go ugh in the stadium, but I don't think anyone properly moans about it for as long as they have. I don't think it's a discussion point at half time. I think it's it's a foul. Let's move on. Sorry, go back oh, to Michael Beale in hot water. Uh, he's, had, he's finally had a bath. 
Uh, no, Maybe uh, lobster. No, uh, there's a lot of fans calling for his head already. But then again, this is the kind of same conversation we had last week with, or the week before, I think. Was I think it was the last week? About, last uh, week. Brendan Rodgers. So I think too soon yet, but there's already folk eyeing up his replacement. So, I mean, who are you going to get? I don't know. Gio Van Backhurst. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a discussion for another day, though, so... Aye. Right. That, What's next on the list? Well, that, that, was the, that was the old firm discussion. I wanted to chat about some results this week in England in the Premier League. Um, some more bar controversy. I don't know if anyone's seen it on Friday night for West Ham v Luton. Luton got back into the game uh, and added time late on. There's a set piece put into the box and it hits James Ward Prowse's hand and no penalties given. And definitely falls in the seen them given category, if not an almost certain penalty category, to That's deny Luton a point. That's what VAR's for. That's what VAR's for, to take the controversy out of it, when actually it just adds more. Um, West, Ham, West Ham obviously flying. Yeah, they're doing well. Uh, Moisey, people calling for his head at the end of last season, he's since gone on to win the Conference League and they've started really well this season. Folk? It be interesting because I think we might come back to talk about a certain player, but uh, it's interesting how folk were basically saying that West Ham were going to be absolutely ruined with uh, Declan Rice leaving, and they seem to have started off better than they did with him. Ward Prowse is a fantastic addition. I know he cost a lot of money for someone who's slightly older, but he is a fantastic addition to that squad. That team ha- is such a threat from set pieces anyway that adding the James Ward Prowse delivery on it is another level. I make a wee, a wee thing here. Is he, is, he, is he better than Rice? No. They do completely different jobs, I think. Oh, okay, then who's more impactful? Yeah, I would say Ward Pros. Currently Ward Pros. Rice carried that team for a while, though. Right, Rice was like Mr. Dependable. And I think he's starting to be for Arsenal as well. And he, he did score for Arsenal, obviously. Uh to make that 2-1 late in injury time. Yes, Greg, what about that for a segue into the Arsenal Man United game? I'm very impressed with myself. More of our controversy, especially if you ask Eric Ten Hag. I don't see him. He does my head in. If, if, if you let me draw the lines, it wasn't offside. Yes, Eric, that's because you'd draw a big one round Alejandro Garnacho <laughs> and say he was onside. It's like when you're at, you used to be at school and you're like, eh, oh, I don't need a ruler. Yeah. I don't need a ruler. I know what I know what opinion I have. I'm just going to draw the line to show it. Bless him. Uh, so. uh, also thought not happy. A, yes. Also thought there was a foul in the lead up to Rice's goal, which I think is just complete nonsense. Uh, I mean, from the highlights I never saw fouls. So. No, saw neither did I. I saw the goals. I saw the Havertz penalty instead, which was denied by VAR. I, again, I'm on the side of I'm not sure it's given other decisions that have gone in the Premier League this season. I'm thinking Rashford the week before, um, and the amount of soft penalties that are given, I didn't think it was enough to overturn it. But again, my VAR philosophy is you should only interfere if something's gone really horribly wrong, and I don't think there was enough there to say really got it wrong. Yeah. Um, no, nah, I was just. I was in the game, so. So, uh, uh, another uh, result for a so-called big team. Uh, Chelsea lose again. Uh, I'd like to throw a wee thing in here. I was uh, at the football on Saturday. I was talking to a few associates and uh, we were talking about a predictions uh, scenario that people do. And uh, I picked three teams. And Nottingham Forest to win being one of them. And I forgot to press go or send or whatever you would call it. So I was a bit annoyed because I would have got it. But uh, Nottingham Forest beating Chelsea obviously 1-0. Chelsea's worst start to a league season since 1995. That's brutal. Almost like Poch is a fraud. It's almost like she can't win anything, but it's also like I feel quite sorry for Poch because, I mean, wouldn't you? I mean, yes, he chose to go there, but the whole club is an absolute chaos. I was going to say I wonder how much opinion he actually gets into his starting lineup. However, uh, look at the fact that Chelsea were definitely trying to get rid of Conor Gallagher on deadline day, given the rumours with Spurs and stuff, um, and the fact Poch keeps playing him, but maybe 
Poch does have a say over the starting lineup, but Chelsea just looks shit. Yeah, they're not. A shadow of their former selves. Uh, I feel like they kind of go and swings and roundabouts though, because they kind of dip down and then they kind of perk back up again. But they usually, usually win between like Christmas and April, and then they, they plummet again. By the time they sat about three managers, and then they stop winning in April, sack another one. Yeah, they, just, they do their yeah. their points in the, in the spring. Well, they yeah. up their, well, they eye up the next ex Tottenham manager, and just ex every every player going. Um, I did read a thing or heard a thing to say that Chelsea are only interested in signing people under 25 now and that's why they didn't sign James Madison in the summer, which is absolutely mad. Like, yeah. I, get, I, get why that, I get why that might be a... Sorry, he's completely thrown me there. I get why <laughs> it might be a valid business model for a smaller club, but I don't know why it's a business model for Chelsea. Just can do what they want. I don't know why you're right. I know, but they want to win the Premier League. Only buying players under under twenty five isn't fundamentally going to do you that. Chelsea don't need to make money Good. by selling players. Although they probably do now because they spend what is it over a billion pounds again. Yeah, it's mental. Uh, speaking of signings, we'll move on. Who do you think has been a good signing this window within the Premier League? Who do you think? Who do I think? You mentioned him earlier. I thought that's who you were going to mention. Yeah, I'll go for it. Rice, rice, baby. I think. Oh yeah, he's starting to do- He's starting to dominate that within within that Arsenal team. I think it's showing his class. I mean, it was a lot of money. Let's be honest. What was it? One hundred and five. Fifty-one. No, one hundred and five. I've got written down. Yeah, it's mental. It's mental. I would say though, you would expect that from a player who costs you that much money. You yeah. would, but look at Moises Caicedo. What did he do at the weekend? Gave away the ball that led to Nottingham Forest's goal. Maybe he did the ball. He's not living up to his. He's billing. No, he's not. He's Philip billing. Uh, so yeah, I'll I'll go for race race baby. Yes, he, he has been absolutely fantastic. I well, again, we we'll might move on to this, but I wrote down kind of when before the window we looked at kind of Rangers, Newcastle, Liverpool, um, who we thought. I quite openly said that I would sell one of my testicles if Declan Rice signed for Newcastle. I will now sell both of them if Declan Rice signs for Newcastle, mm-hmm. um, in the next year because it won't happen, um. He is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, I have to agree. Right, do you care to go next? Can I say two? Because we've, we've mentioned one already. Anyway. Uh, Ward Prowse, we've already mentioned him. And he's, yeah. His gravy is probably Bristol. Oh, yeah. Is another one I've got is Musa Diaby at Villa. I think he's going to do some, some wonders. I think yeah. he'll come good. I'm not sure I've seen... Everything so far. I only know because he's, he's in my fancy team and he's got me some decent points. So. Villa's, um, we'll come on to that as well. Villa's um, track record of doing good things with former Bayer Leverkusen winners isn't great, mm-hmm. given Leon Bailey. Bayer Leverkusen themselves actually having, they're, I think, believe they're four from four in the Bundesliga uh, under Xabi Alonso. They're doing well, they're top, I believe. Yeah, so they've not, uh, they have not missed Mr. Diaby, but yes. Uh, I think he will come good. Let's see that way. You're um, right. I'd have to agree with that. I think he has been a good signer. So, Gregory, what are you thinking? I'm also going to do two. I'm going to do two from the same club, and it might be a club we've not mentioned yet today, actually. Um, I'm going to focus on Angie's recruitment at Spurs. Um, you know, again, to go back to, to what we said at the start of the window. Um, can I add? I thought that was going to be a Newcastle there with a big grin you had in your face. No. Um, I was to talk about Newcastle quickly, though. I said I thought Madison's would go to Newcastle in the summer. I'm really disappointed he didn't now. I was very sceptical at the time, but you look at the way he's slotted into that Spurs side with Ange Ball and just looks so comfortable and an absolute, just, he has a pass that, like, that's just absolutely phenomenal in terms of like his range of passing and his ability to see that killer ball. Um, £40 million pound for him, when you look at like money that's being thrown about for other players, has to be considered a relative steal. It's not even really a big English tax either. It's quite a reasonable fee. From a uh, player who wanted to leave from a club that were relegated, I suppose, but the like, Spurs player. themselves have looked amazing. Yeah, that would be very impressive, I would have to say. But not really played a big team. Have they really played a big team? They've beat Man United, but you know, I think we could they beat might Man finish United. eighth. I think we could beat Man U, so 
Maybe that could be a football challenge, the three of us versus my United. We just have to try. I know. Can I break Bruno Fernandez's legs? I'd quite like to do that. Depends if Eric Ten Hag is his colouring pens out. Yeah, just give everything offside and make Bruno, uh, make Bruno and Eric Ten Hag more about it. Um, the other Spurs side I was going to focus on is Manor Solomon, um, who played for Fulham last year on loan from Shakhtar. Spurs picked him up in the summer. Played really well at the weekend against Burnley. The fact he was free, I know it's partially to do with his contract running out in the situation in Ukraine. But he, again, looks really good. He had a really good spell at Fulham last year. I think he will be a key part of that Spurs team. I think you're right. So I also was, agree. It was an interesting window. So. Uh, yeah. another, one, another one I noted him was, was, was in Kunku. I think he will come good when he's not injured. Yeah, I think Chelsea actually... need him to come good. I know there's a lot of hope on that Nicholas Jackson... Uh, but yeah. if anyone seen his miss at the weekend, it's worth a watch. If you haven't seen it, it's worth a watch. I He's don't hopeless. quite know how he missed. Sorry, Miss Jackson. Bringing back the musical numbers. Yeah. And the last one, Greg, you'll like this one, is Tenali as well. That's another one I'd noted him. I'd noted Tenali, darling. He looks like, again, to kind of move this on as well to reflecting kind of back on what we said at the start of the window. I said I wanted Declan Rice because Sean Longstaff. It looks different when Newcastle missed Sean Longstaff. Tenali's gone in that midfield and Tenali is a Rolls Royce for player, as I've said before. He dictates the tempo. He's great at controlling possession. But fundamentally, it still looks like Newcastle missed Sean Longstaff in that team. So like, long Bruno playing deeper isn't working. Working. Like... They still miss Sean Longstaff, and the like, yes, Tonali's great, but I have questions over that midfield. We think are Gimer Aish and Tonali not very similar players. Kind, kind of, I like Gimer Aish is. I, Gimer Aish focuses a bit less on control and possession. I think he's more like an active, creative player. He's box to box, probably. You could argue. Yeah, that he... but they they seem to miss that kind of anchor hook that kind of will do the defending and you know Newcastle's midfield has looked a bit absent and it's exposed a defence which while it was really good in the Premier League last season ultimately there are Newcastle fans already pointing at Fabian Shane and going why did no one sign another centre half you got Paul Dumb as backup so yeah exactly Against I, think you've, I think you've avoided actually saying about the result from the weekend because I, uh-huh. I was told by a fan that I had to mention it to brighten your day. That was the well, hey. word I was told. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure you could uh, probably guess who said that. So, <laughs> Yes, uh, I'd, I'd like to point out that his side did have a good result at the weekend. Um, well done to them. I turned it on for approximately two minutes, watched a Premier League standard referee not give a clear penalty to Southampton and turned it off again. Um, that was about right. But let's, let's park that there. Um, right. Newcastle were shocking. They were absolutely honking. Um, Sven Botman was not in that team, and look at what happens when Sven Botman is not in that defence. Being run about by an eighteen-year-old. Being run about by an eighteen-year-old, yeah. Who is eighteen? Been for ages. Billy Gilmore, who so, was by all accounts the best player on the pitch, bar none, even better than the person who scored a hat trick. So. When there's no Botman, they get done by a bunch of bears. Yeah. So, one falter. Right. Did you have the rest of the predictions we made for back? So I did. So I've kind of spoke about two of the Newcastle ones already. Um, Harry Maguire, who was my wild card, I said at the time, I read Harry Maguire was linked to Newcastle. Um, I said I wanted that not to happen. That's not happened. So I'm taking that as a win. Um, I said Sat Max Man would leave as well. So that is, you know, he went to Saudi Arabia. There was lots to talk about the inflated fee. That's a good uh, question hey, from me. Can I have the, the lottery numbers for next week then? No. Uh, <laughs> I will say actually, out of the three of us, we'll get on to this. Um two of two of them have left out of the people we said we thought we'd leave. The person who didn't get that right was Kyle. Kyle said he thought Keevan Kelleher would leave. Um, I have seen that he was very, very close to a move to Celtic at the end of the window um, and is still very heavily reported to do that. 
I would like to point out at that point, I said at that time, he would be a great signing for Celtic. So, yes, you can have a lot of numbers for next week. I didn't think they have I wanted him to leave so he could actually play because he's a good keeper, but I didn't yeah. think he would. But... I kind of think what I said. The other people you mentioned, Kyle, you said you thought Liverpool would sign Nico Bar- Nicolo Barella. No, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. You've got someone who I think might actually be better than Shabaslai. He looks oh. great. And Graven Birch, I've never seen him play, can't he comment? Yeah. Seems good, uh, though. But... Seems like someone who went to Bayern to not play and actually wanted to play instead of develop. You also mentioned Haaland and Bellingham, so we'll just gloss over those. And they were just... Because they're brilliant, was it? Yeah. Uh, Rangers, Robert, you said they would sign Malik Tillman. Darn. Again, I, th- I think it was me and Kyle at the time who said that... Um, Rangers not having Champions League football might deter that, and yeah, so be it. He didn't and come out. He played about five did. minutes and half can't win. Yes, yeah. You said that Glenn Kamara would likely leave Rangers, which he has done. He signed for Leeds. Oh, yeah, right. Um, you said a signing you'd love to see, but would never have happened was Roberto Firmino. He's gone to Saudi Arabia. I think oh, he would have been much better than anyone you have signed. Um, and the other one, which I think we should kind of link this in with discussion of kind of how Rangers have done in the window. Um, you said as a wild card you'd like to see Lauren Shanklin sign for Rangers, and I wonder, yeah, if, I... given how you did sign, I wonder if you'd get any thoughts on that now. Um, I read this, I was reading in some fan forums actually the other day, and they were talking about why how, you weren't why calling spent... into Super Scoreboard again. No, Barry Ferguson, you're a cheerleader. <laughs> Oh well, when someone crops it then, aka me or Kyle, then you'll, you'll be in trouble. Uh, my, my mind's gone blank. Um, cheerleader. People were saying why have we spent all that money when we could have signed Shanklin who's proven in the league and it's exactly what I said, so it's not my fault that Michael Beale doesn't listen to Dave Pints in a clean sheet. It is. I, I think... Was- I was going to say, there's two they should have went for. The two they should have went for was Shanklin or Duke, or both. Two proven in the league. Duke was going to cost about £10 million if it was Rangers, I think. I think any club in Scotland selling their striker to Rangers would add a significant Rangers tax onto that. But Shanklin's a Rangers fan as well. I think it's probably worth it still. I would, but I think that ship's maybe sailed. I I think it has. When you look at the money you've spent up front, you spent it on Danilo, who out of, if we say the four of them, you've got Danilo, Danilo, Sima, Dessers and Lammers. Danilo looks the only one who looked even close to getting pass marks, and even then he's not there yet. Because oh, he starts on the bench most of the time. Again, he's the, literally looked so much better than anyone else. You've got Kamara Roof as well, to be fair, but he's I'm not. I was about to add that. Um, he's got plasticine legs, so he'll be broken soon enough. Yeah. Uh, that's actually when you're saying four new players they all need to like develop like get used to it and whatnot. but it's also well, Rangers you yeah. have one to I, hit the ground running at an old farm team one I will say is an absolute belter of a signing has been Jack Butland and I think he deserves a shout out he's been absolutely solid it's good to see a goalie playing for Rangers that will actually come out for a cross and demand his box the I mean, fact McGregor, that... was a, McGregor was an excellent shot stopper and everyone knows that but Butland's kind of got it all is the fact that you're saying Rangers' best signing has been their goalkeeper reflective on Rangers' start to the season? Oh, definitely. The well, problems are an attack, and you look useless. Uh, we still on the ball. I still break question off. Campwell. Yeah. He's a good player, as Oda. Nah, good Campwell. I don't, I don't yeah. agree with your criticism. How much was Campwell? Campwell? I don't know. He was in the game. In big games, I think Campbell tries too hard. You've seen it in every Champions League game and against Celtic. He tries too hard, he loses the ball, he gets annoyed at himself and he gets booked. It's happened on numerous occasions where I've watched him now. Happened he's, on Saturday. He's still trying, though. He's trying, but as I said, he's not a Champions League quality player. And well, he's, he's not anymore game against Celtic, the Europa League. Well, yes. The game well, Rangers aren't a Champions League quality team. I think we might even find out they might even not be a Europa League quality team. Conference League. Okay. I'll finish third for that. They might not even do that. 
We'll we, haven't, so. we haven't discussed this draw, actually. Yes, we haven't. We might do that next week. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that next week as we're getting on. But speaking of transfers, I'm enjoying the game this week. I lost last week, so I'm on the game. Uh, it's my first transfer of the game, actually. I usually do the, the categories, but we're here for the transfer game, so recap for anyone who hasn't seen it. Um, five points. I give a clue for each point, so obviously the first clue, getting five points because it's a lot more obscure. Now you can down from five to one. Uh, if the boys get it. On the corresponding point, they get that many points. You know, Greg, I should have let you explain it, but here we go. Right. Start us off. Right. 2018. 60 million. What? I believe this is 60 Six, million. 60. It's in euros because I did it on Transfer Mart. 20. 2018. 60 million. Golovin. Incorrect. Ferran Torres. He's my go to guess. No. Right. 2018. 60 million for an attacker. I mean, you know what I'm gonna say. It's not fair in Torres. So. Yeah. Effie Ambrose is a defender. Um, twenty eighteen for sixty million. That would be Haaland. No. Um, I'm trying to remember who Chelsea had up front because it sounds like an amount Chelsea would spend for a red for a striker for no reason. Nah, I keep, yeah, pull search. Negative. He's considered an attacker by some ridiculous reason. Right. 2018, 60 million, an attacker who was born in Brazil. Born in Brazil. Vinicius Junior. Um, 2018. I, I know it's not, but Morato. Right. Last clue, no, two last clues, sorry. Uh, 2018, 60 million, an attacker, born in Brazil, left Chelsea. Left at Chelsea? William. Oh. No. Pass. The thing no. is, <laughs> I have no idea. I panicked. My mind is completely blank. Diego uh. Costa was born in Brazil, but didn't go for that amount of money. Diego Costa. Ding, ding, ding. Right, so you get two, points, two points. Yeah, I'm keeping it up. Well done, it's Diego Costa. I thought I'd better say played, uh, born in because he played for Brazil and but then he changed to Spain. Yeah, so. he played for Brazil and then changed to Spain. Who did he get here for that much money? Yeah. Atletico Madrid. Was it China? Atletico Madrid. Was it that much money? I thought it was a free. Yeah, I could have sworn it was free. Oh, well, I've maybe looked at my notes wrong, but we'll... <laughs> Well, let's check, shall we? So my toys are at the pram. I'm not playing anymore. That's fine. I'll win 2-0. Post does that belt you. I'll Give me a this. second. We're fact-checking. No, I don't want to. I'll take your word for no, it. I've won, it. I've won the points now. I don't care about... No, I did. Now. 2018 Chelsea Athletic Madrid, 60 million. Fee. That is Aye. insane. Maybe, if you, maybe the fuck when you moved to Chelsea, yeah, I don't believe time. it. But not when you left. No. Right, moving on. Right. 2005 for 27 million. Oh, dear. 27 million, 2005. Hmm. Zidane? Negative. That's that's a mouth too early for him, and that's exactly who I was thinking about. Um, Humbug. Well, I'm going to gamble in Kaka, even though it's wrong. No. Nah. Right, 2005, 27 million for a defender. Cannavaro? This... Cannavaro's wrong. I don't hear what you mean. God, it's... Surely this isn't Jonathan Woodgate. No. I think it was just later on. 2005, 27 million defender from Spain. Are these all current players? Or is it very? Yeah, another current player. Yeah, ah, Sergio Ramos. Ding, ding, ding. Three points, Kyle. Well done. Yeah, he's not retired yet. I checked. So just, just when it, the, yeah. the gears were turning. My gears right. were not turning. 
Right. Are you ready? No. Yeah. I thought this was pretty easy one. Let's see. 2021, 117 and a half million. I'll do that again. Up. 2021. 117.5 million. 170.5 in 2020. 117. 107, alright. We are both stuck. I haven't mind that far back, Christ. It was two years ago. I've, I've got long COVID. Kaku. <laughs> no. Bah. I've got nothing. Wait, two, 2021, 117.5 million. An attacker. Yao Felix. No. He's a, he's a good guess, Kyle. How can, how can they afford these players? That's, that's all I've got in my head. How can they afford these players? Do that right. Well, Ferran Torres saw it. No. Close. I've got nothing else in my. I've got nothing else in my head. It's empty. Then twenty one hundred seventeen point five million attacker from England. Grealish. Yes. And he is an attacker. He's a winger. Before we start. Yeah, I know. I hate the fact he's called an attacker. Is that is that not... three for Kyle? Yes. Yeah, six two. Yes, right. Why? Why the hell have they labelled them? I assume the transfer market just don't have winger as an option. Well, it goes no. to the front, the front three. To be fair, it's like so. attacking, and it's like one of out wide. We could, we could start making winger if you want. I think I used winger last. Uh, I think I used winger the other week. I don't mind. I just forget when I hear we'll, attacking. We'll, it's not striker. We'll do, we'll do a, a an agreement on that. Right, let's keep going. Two thousand and thirteen, eleven point seven five million. There's eleven. 10, 13, sorry. 13 for 11 million. 11, 11.75 million. 2013? Hmm. Oh, what's that wee freak called? Van Persie. No. You're too early. 2013. So we're not even at a World Cup of the Euros year. Correct. You'll get the point for that, though. No, I don't. I've got nothing. Carry on. Right, uh, 2013, 11.75 million for an attacker. Mbaba. No. Papi Cisse. No. 2013, 11.75 million an attacker. Uh, Plays for England. 2013. Daniel Sturridge. No. No, that would be wrong. Um, 2013, Christ, I was 13 year old. Um, Oh, right here. That's what I'm saying. Uh, 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 I don't know. I don't, uh, Adam Delano. No. no of course, I need to think they could be wingers as well. Sorry. Oh, see. Uh, he, played, he played for England. I'll say that. Uh, 2013, 11.75 million attacker. Played for England. He left Crystal Palace. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. yeah. I then thought he also played for Ivory Coast, so but he did play for England. Did he actually get a cap for England? I think it was in a friendly. Yeah. yeah. Sure he did. Born in England. I think. Right, so that was another two for Kyle. Yes. It's eight two. I've had an absolute nightmare. Right, last one. Can you push the fuck? No. No. Oh me. Right. It's just the last one shit. Um, right. 2011, 25 million. Mm. Hmm. Atem Ben Arthur. No. Johan Kabai. No. 2011, 25 million for a goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hmm. I don't mind that far back. Wasn't he Chris? He's, he's been there for ages. Uh, yeah. Brad, Brad Friedel. Negative. De Gea is it's too early for De Gea and it's too cheap. That's what I'm going for. You're going for De Gea? Yeah. You, you're correct. Is that is that five points? No, it's four points. Four. For 2011, Six. 25 million, a goalkeeper from Spain, left the flight over from Madrid to join Man United. 8-6. I'll take that. It's a good job you're supposed to be that belt, Kyle. 
Right, so Greg is going to be back on the game next week. But yeah, yes. thank you. We might be innovating. We might be trying something new. That being... Right, yes. let's go on to another segment of ours. The predictions. I'll let Greg yes. take the lead again. Odd predictions. Um, uh, next week, last week, should be said. Uh, Kyle with one point, myself with two points, Robert with three points. Very quickly, what did Robert get right? Robert got right that part of Thistle would beat Morton. Uh, I got that right as well. Uh, Robert also got right that North ha- Northampton would lose to Wickham Wanderers at home and that the Austrian team Hartberg would beat the Austrian team Wolfsberg. I knew it. Um, the other point me and Kyle got, we both got the same point. We both said that St Johnston Dundee would be a draw and it nearly wasn't. So thank you for the 96 minute equaliser or whatever it was. Uh, this week the Challenge Cup's on, so it's my round of games. So I've picked four champ- Challenge Cup games, and I've picked two wild cards, which are both international games. So uh, obviously mm-hmm. we pick uh, after ninety minutes. So if the tie goes to extra time, it will be considered a draw. The first one is Corain versus Hamilton Ackies. Uh, Hamilton lost. Uh, none of us predict that Hamilton would lose their perfect start to the season at the weekend by drawing against Sterling. Um, I'm going for the Ackies in Ireland this time. I think, yes, I think the Ackies will have a nice trip over and have a nice win. Looking at a draw. We're going for extra time. The, the second one, Edinburgh City, who have not started League One particularly well, against East Cobride, who are flying in the Lowland League. I am going for the shock. I think East Cobride will do it. I think it'll be a draw. I think it will have to go to e- ET. I look at a East Cobride win. One. Uh, Challenge Cup again. Uh, Queen's Park make the trip to North Wales. Uh, and they are away to Bava Town, who are one of the few teams in Wales with an unbeaten record yet. Uh, I still think Queen's Park should have too much for them. I think Rudy Payton might kick in the goals. I'm going for a Queen's Park win. I'm also saying Queen's Park win. I think they'll be too strong. We have the Spiders. <laughs> Um, last Challenge Cup game is Dumbarton uh, against Kelty Hearts. Kelty again, not doing particularly well in League One. Dumbarton started League Two quite strongly. Uh, this time, I think this one will go to extra time. No, I think uh, Kelty Hearts will win this one. I think this was a shocky walkie with a Dumbarton win. Dumbarton. Uh, the two L cards are both uh, European Championship qualifiers, uh, both on Saturday again. So the first one is Ukraine versus England. Uh, England obviously beat Ukraine at Wembley. I think they will do so wherever this game is being played. I do not know what it's being played. I'm going for an England one. I also think the three Lions will win. England. That's getting clipped. Every time England play. Um... Other champ- uh, European Championship qualifier is Romania versus Israel. Uh, I have absolutely nothing to say on this, apart from the fact that it's amazing that Israel are not playing Scotland again. Uh, I also, though, think they'll win. I think it'll be a draw. Who's the other team I've, I've zoned out? Romania versus Israel. Romania. Uh, uh, Romania, home team advantage. Why not? Uh, that is the end of the predictions for this week. Notable for saying that me and Robert both think there will be no home wins in the six games picked. No, I think I think that might, might come back to bite us. Before it we might. end today, we, we need our uh, FPL roundup for this week. Uh, I'm getting grief for not saying the name. So, Kyle Pagan is the number one. He's on a grand total of 269. Well done, Kyle. Keep it up. Um, number two slot is Jack Hughes. He's on 268. Only one point, point behind. One point. One point behind. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, third place, dropping down the ladder, is Kyle Palmer. Whoever that is, on two hundred and sixty-seven. Yeah, you can get one point behind, now. behind Jack. So congratulations, boys! Uh, you're the top three. So keep it up. Um, away the lads. Greg Notman has dropped down to number seven, two hundred and thirty-six. And then uh, I haven't moved. I've remained in fifteenth. Uh, Gangsters Allardyce with uh, me with a two hundred and eight points. So yeah, I've got my, I've, I've got I, my, my finger out. I want to shout out uh, Kieran McKenzie for getting 99 points. That's a, He got the best of last round, so well done, Kieran. Good yeah, work. He's jumped up to eight, so well done, Kieran. He's actually yeah. joined eighth with Ash McCutcheon. And Who's Cyril, had on the podcast before. And Cyril Dub, he's their own 2-3-2. Two, two, so. 
Well done, boys. Yes. Cyril yes. has been dropping down. He was doing well, well but... Just shows us anyone's league. It yeah, does. so... It's got my name yeah, on it. It's nice. it? uh, eight, 18 players in the league, so it's, it's entertaining. So thank you very much for that again. Right, that'll round us up for t- today then. Until next week, hope you've all enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe and all that jazz. But yes, it's appreciated, so please do it. Right, see you later. Thank you. Oh, wow. Godspeed. <laughs>